Anderson. Simply click subscribe, then click the bell to be notified for the next video, study, or news at U and Him Ministries on YouTube or Pamela Gunderson. Thank you, and you have a blessed day. Good evening, church, seekers, bride of Christ, body of Christ, atheists, and agnostics. Welcome to You and Him Ministries Bible Study and Christian Prophetic News. I am the host of You and Him Ministries. My name is Pam Gunderson. I welcome you tonight. And we are very glad to have people that are interested in the Word of God. We are studying, uh, we use the New King James Version as well as the King James Version. You can have it either with your Bible, uh, which is a paper Bible with paper, paper pages, or with uh, an electronic device. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into worship. And then I'll be back. We go into prayer, and then we'll start studying Colossians, starting with chapter one. This is the air I breathe. This is the.
lost without you. Come quickly, Lord. Come quickly, Lord. Hello, I'm back, and I hope that you enjoyed that song. I am practicing getting worship on these tapes. Now let's go into prayer. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the information that you are allowing me to accumulate on the projects that I'm working on that you are speaking to me about. And I lift up each and every person that's in here, whether they be secular or believers or part of the church or not part of the church, but Lord, that you are helping them hear and understand what it is that you want and have for them as our Father who art in heaven. You are our Father who is in heaven, and you love us, and you speak to us, that we pray to you in Jesus Christ's blessed name. I come against any spirit that's trying to hinder this Bible study, because we're in Colossians, Lord, and we want to know all about Paul while he was in prison, because we are in dark days right now, Father. We may have people that will be in prison for their faith in the coming days. We're already hearing about imprisonment and fines if we don't take a shot or we don't get mass. Lord, I ask that you protect your sheep. Lord, that we will hear you as you direct us, that we can call on your angels to cover us, Father. I call out to the angels and I plant them around this Grays Harbor area, Lord God, in Jesus' name, that this darkness will not envelop the church or the body of Christ, that we will call on you and you will answer, Lord. Lord, answer questions, Father, even while I'm on here. Lord, shove your mouth into my mouth. Lord, even that you set the tone of this study, Father, in Jesus' name, that, Lord, I'm not controlling it. All I'm doing is studying and reading your word and from the best scholars that I know, Lord God, so that we can help the sheep to understand who they are in Christ, who they are, and Christ in us, the hope of glory. Colossians 1, verse 27, I believe it is. Lord God, we love you. We bless you. In Jesus' blessed name, amen. Okay, so we're going to look at the outline, and I will be putting the outline up. And I'll read it to you real quick, but we're going to go into the verses. But the... Uh, uh, chapter 1 is doctrinal. It's Christ, the fullness, which is pleroma. We went through that yesterday. Of God, in Christ, we are made full, chapters 1 through 2. Then the practical is Christ, the fullness of God, poured out in life through believers, chapters 3 through 4. And you will see the outline up on um, the mainline thing here as I'm speaking. You don't need to see my face all the time. And so I'm trying to get into the study here. Okay, chapter 1. The theme is Christ, the fullness of God. In Christ we are made full. Paul's prayer, the person of Christ, the objective work of Christ for sinners, subjective work of Christ for saints. The introduction states, the four prison epistles of Paul, which include the epistle to the Colossians, have been called the anatomy of the church because their subjects cover all aspects of the Christian faith. In Colossians, our attention is directed to the head of the body, who is Christ. The body, the church, is secondary. Instead, Christ is the theme and Christian living is centered in him. The greeting starts out, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God and Timotheus, our brother to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are in Colossae, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ in Colossians 1, verses 1 through 2. I'm going to, uh, I had just made a call. They're going to try to call me back. And what I want to do is I want to turn this phone all the way down so we're not being disturbed. 
Now remember, just because this letter is going to Colossae and to the congregation there, it is also written in the canon for us. So he's speaking to the church, no matter where the church is. It doesn't have to be in Colossae. Okay, this is just going to aggravate me. I'm going to get this thing completely off. Uh, sorry. There we go. Let's get all these tones off of here. Get the volume down, 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 down. No notifications. Get them down, get them down. There you go. You know, we are so tied in. They can message me. I'll be more than happy to call them back later. Uh, we are so tied to our telephones. We don't even write letters anymore. So this is a letter. Some of you people may not know what a letter is. <laughs> calls, uh, Paul calls himself an apostle of Jesus Christ, and he always says, it is by the will of God. Paul was in the will of God when he was an apostle. God made him an apostle. If uh, you don't know who Paul was, Paul was um, vehemently against the Christian church because he was a... A Jew as well as a Roman citizen, but he didn't believe that these Christians uh, were from God, and he was out there getting ready to kill as many as he possibly could, and report has it that he killed many, 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 and uh, he was going to go get a contract out on as many Jews as he possible or Christians as he possibly could, and God slapped him down on the road to Damascus. A great light came upon him and uh, blinded him. Uh, an apostle, one of the prophets, was sent by God to him to explain uh, what was going on. God, Jesus uh, appeared to him himself. And uh, we'll see this in some of our other studies. But to just do a very uh, short background, Paul was changed instantly from a Christian killer to a Christian believer. And then he was given a commission as an apostle, even though he had not walked with Christ. And so when he this happened... Uh, he wanted to go uh, participate with the other apostles. Well, they didn't trust him. They were afraid of him because of how many people he had killed. So God sent him away, and he went back to tent making, and God trained him up. And now he has had, I think this was his second tour uh, uh, of uh, going out and planting churches, and now he is in Rome in prison. And he is speaking from his prison cell. So we're asking, are you in the will of God today? Are you serving Christ? Are you sure you are in the proper place? Are you sure you are doing the proper thing? We believe that every believer is called to function in the body of believers. But it is important, let's see, in the body of believers, that's strange the way that went. But it is important to be functioning in the right way. There are too many people who are active doing something that they are not supposed to be doing. Too often we try to imitate other people. We think, I'll get busy doing what brother so-and-so is doing. We need to remember that our gifts are different and we each are going to function a little differently. But we ought to be functioning. God made Paul an apostle. Did God put you where you are? When you know you are in the will of God, there is a deep satisfaction in your life, by the way. I will tell you that I have that deep satisfaction. I would never have believed. This seems like such a small little thing that I'm doing. We have no idea, as I put these teachings or studies up on um, YouTube, or rumble or anywhere else I'm putting them, who is actually hearing and listening? There may not be a post, but somebody's being touched. I am right in the center of the will of God. 
And I know it because I can't wait to do what I'm doing. Have you ever had a job where you're like, oh, I don't want to go to work today. I hate my job. But have you ever had a job where it's, I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. You have a hard time going to sleep because you can't wait to get back. Have you ever had anything like that? I had kind of one job, but this is more of, uh, I want to know this is a career, but believe me, I enjoyed this a lot more than seminary because seminary is necessary though for me to be able to even understand half of what uh, some people are talking about. So anyway, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, he writes, He's not talking about two groups of people. The saints and the believing brethren are the same. Faithful brethren are believing brethren, and they are saints. We are not saints because of what we do. We are saints by our position. The Greek word for saints means to be set apart for God. I'm speaking to saints right now who are believers. If you are agnostic, the reason why God has me doing what I am doing right now is because he wants you to be a believer so that you will be part of the body of Christ. The way that I explain things to people is going to be different than what you've heard before. I might be the very voice that will bring you in because I'm nothing. Paul said he was nothing, but he was authentic. Some of the people today that I'm watching, they are doing what brother or sister so-and-so is doing. Because I have to tell you, there's a ministry out there, wonderful graphics, streaming, doing all wonderful things that I cannot do yet. Right now, I'm fighting audacity, uh, music, uh, bored and having a good time much to some people's chagrin but I'm having a good time in Christ it's called the joy of the Lord he's put it into my heart to bring back that which the locusts and canker worm are trying to steal my voice is healthy <clears throat> it may, and every once in a while there's a glitch because of the fact that I've been fighting a cold it's not an excuse but it's laying on my vocal cords, and every once in a while you'll hear it, and, but that'll go away as God uh, continues to heal me. So let's go on here. Okay. And uh, faithful brethren are believing brethren, and they are saints to be set apart for God. Notice that they are in Christ, but they are at Colossae. We're in Christ. And you're where you are. Same thing. He's still speaking to you. The most important question is not, where are you? But who are you in? That may not be good grammar, but it sure is good Bible. The saints are at Colossae. It is important that we have an address down here, but we ought to have an address up yonder also in Christ. And that address is... The hope of glory in Christ, in heaven, with Christ. Grace be unto you and peace, he says, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must know the grace of God in order to experience the peace of God. If you are not experiencing, if you are not experiencing the peace of God, do you know what it's like to lay your head down on the pillow at night? You've had a little bit of a conversation with the Lord. It may not be a long one. But you know, if you're married to the Lord or you're in Christ, you want to have at least talk to him for a little bit. And then you lay your head down on the pillow and you go to sleep. You're in peace. You wake up in peace. You're not, there's not a hovering over top of you of gloom and what's going to happen. You know that whatever is happening in this day and age, we are dealing with mandates right now. Mandates against the Constitution, against things that 
we ought not be uh, having to put up with. But we have a dictator now in the White House who has set himself up as a king, and he's a bad king. And there is a word in uh, Proverbs that states, when the king is bad, the people suffer. My translation. They are not happy. We're not happy. And we know that we had a fraudulent election. The analytics hide me. This day will not pick it up because God has me covered because they're not looking at this video. They're looking at the ones who are have big ministries, blah, 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 and taking them down, taking them down, taking them down. I speak no hindering spirit against any of these videos that are being, making, being made. They will be preserved and they'll be continuing to be put up on youandhimministries.com. Eventually we will have a phone app and they will not take them down. How to put up a phone app? I don't know yet, but God's showing me. And it has to be the right timing. You don't want to just rush in like a fool. Um, in the better manuscripts, and the Lord Jesus Christ is not added. It says simply, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father. It is important to remember that Paul is writing to counteract Gnosticism, which was the first heresy in the church. And we have it back in the New Age, for sure. This was the Essene branch of Gnosticism. They regulate, relegated God to a place far removed from man and taught that one had to go through emanations to get to God. Have you ever noticed that all heathen religions and cults have some sort of an open sesame before you can get in to God? Paul makes it very clear here that grace and peace come directly from God our Father. We come directly to Him through Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Colossians 1.3 You and I can go directly to God. We do not need to go through any form of emanation at all. Anyone who is in Christ Jesus has access to God the Father. One of the benefits of being justified by faith is access to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Praying always with God always for you. You would find it very challenging to compile a list of the folk Paul said he was praying for and add the Colossian believers to the list. He always prayed for them. They were on his prayer list. Who is on your prayer list? You might want to make a prayer list. Uh, I have a prayer list. I have a few things that it, uh, it, it, it's like wrote. It's always there. And I go through it, and then God will add. And sometimes the Lord will hover over a certain person or group because he wants us to pray more for them. But remember, we're praying to the Father in Jesus' name. Um, the other thing is when it talks about access to the Father, I have made it a habit because of this cold that the enemy is trying to push on me and post-nasal drip and anything else that, that he's got for me to try to stop this ministry. Uh, my penicillin right now is communion. And so I do take communion and I go through the words of what he did while he was passing out the bread and the cup. And you don't want to take it um, without prayer. You want to make sure that you're not sick and dying because you're taking it um, in a way that is not uh, lifting up the Lord. Um, and I'm not saying that it's that uh, we're not trying to be in ritual. Some of you may have ritual. Every day right now, I am combing through the proverb that matches the day. Uh, today is the 14th that I'm uh, uh, taping. And so I will look at Proverbs 14, and today uh, something lifted up off the page that meant something, and so that's my, di my daily bread. Because we ask, give us this day our daily bread in the Lord's Prayer. And it's a good thing to do. Uh, God will have a word for you. Uh, it has a tendency to just suddenly, it'll speak louder to you, or it makes an impression, or you're being accused by the enemy of something, and it will ring 
in a way that you can quote it back to the devil and say, there, this is what God says. This is God's word. You're a liar. Amen? So, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. That's Colossians um, chapter 1, verses 4 through 5. Here Paul links the trinity of graces for believers. First is faith. Past. Second is love in the present. Three, hope for the future. Paul is going to talk about the good points of these believers. They had faith toward God. Faith rests upon historical facts. It is based on the, on the past. It was based on what they had heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. This refers to the content of the gospel, the great truths that pertain to the gospel of the grace of God. God has shut up to a, has shut up to a cross, and he asks us to believe him. You haven't really heard the gospel until you have heard something to believe. The gospel is not something for us to do. It tells what he did for you and for me over 1,900 years ago. So, the, and, uh, so I'm going on with the scripture, which reads, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, verse 17. Faith is not a leap in the dark. It rests upon historical facts. It is believing God. Then going on in Colossians, and of the love which ye have to all the saints. Faith is based upon the past, but love is for the present. It is nonsense to today to boast of the fundamentalism of our doctrine and then to spend our time crucifying our brethren and attempting to find fault with them. There are too many wonderful saints looking down on their fellow believers who have not measured up to their high standard and who are not separated like they are separated. The world is not interested in that kind of approach, friends. The world is looking to see whether Christians love each other or not. It is hypocrisy to consider oneself a Christian than not to demonstrate love for your brethren. If we have disagreements with our brethren, we are to bear with them, we are to pray for them, and we are to love them. There will always be conflict, but we are to love them. Remember that a Christian is a sinner saved by grace, and none of us will ever be perfect in this life. A man came to criticize a certain Christian leader, and we don't agree with everything that leader does either, but the Spirit of God is using that man in a mighty way. So the man was asked, who was complaining, do you ever pray for him? And the man answered, no, I don't, he replied. Well, we think you ought to pray for him. You may not agree with him on every point, but the Spirit of God is using him. These Colossian believers had their good points. They were sound in faith toward God. They were fundamental in their belief, and they also had love for the brethren. Paul says that they had hope for the future, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. In 1 Corinthians, also Paul lists these three graces, but he lists them a little differently. He says... And now, or he writes, now abideth faith, love, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. Paul puts hope in second position and love is listed last. Why? Because love is the only thing that is going to abide. Love is for the present. It is true. And it is also going to make it into eternity. Our Lord said that love was above all the commandments, and it is very important that we begin to exhibit love down here on this earth. You do agree, of course, and I do, of course, that hope which is laid up for you in heaven is the blessed hope. We are to look for the coming of Christ. We are to love 
his appearing. You know, it's interesting. The worship that we had today, I didn't plan. I truly believe the Holy Spirit in me selects the song for the worship on each one of these broadcasts, of which I don't know because I haven't read this beforehand. I'm reading and studying the same way as you are. This is all new for me, too, other than the sermons that I'm writing, which are different than this. Um, and so I, I do appreciate that um, it, it was the air I breathe. Let me uh, speak those words again. It is the air I breathe. It is my daily bread. We're desperate for you, God. We're desperate for your appearing. We're lost without you, Lord. We're truly lost. And I'm speaking right now to some lost people. You know who you are. You're lost. You're getting ready to lose a job because the government is t telling you what it is that you have to do because we have an evil king in Congress right now. He is surrounding himself with evil. Some of them may believe they're Christians, but they're so liberal that they do not understand and are interpreting the word of God wrongly. Uh, I believe it's Hebrews 13 that states, oh, you are to obey the government. No, that is not what it means. If it is putting itself above the word of God, we obey the word of God first. We do not obey the king. Um, we could go into great theological study. I could take you into great, but right now, I'm talking to everybody. Some of you haven't read a Bible in your life. Some of you have never been to church in your life. Some of you have been born into homes where you have been abused and you are blaming God that he didn't help you and as a little child. You said, well, if God really loved me, he wouldn't have let this happen. Your parents had free will. And if they were not gods, then they could do anything that they wanted to you. It had nothing to do with him. And it didn't mean that you were born into the wrong family. It doesn't mean that God didn't create you. But God's will will not supersede the will of the people that are raising our children. The only thing that will supersede that will is for that person to come into Christ, to believe God's word, and be regenerated and become born again, which is what another thing this ministry is about. Unless you are born again, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. I am speaking to many people out there as I go, and if you have not accepted the Lord, you will spend eternity in darkness. You choose light or darkness. We have light and darkness going on in our world right now. It is free will, and God is not going to take it away from you, but if you are hearing a wooing of come to me, come to me, open your ears and listen, because God is calling. He will not always call you. If you close your ears and harden your heart long enough, you won't hear him any longer. And I don't believe that someone that says that they don't believe in God, I don't believe that's true. I believe that you pray that somebody cares about you, but somebody has shoved that away from you because something evil was propelling them. You have the right as a Christian, once you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have 
the upper hand at that point on the enemy and you have the right to tell him in Jesus name get lost because he no longer has power over you he can set things up but you speak the word of God the way Jesus did against him and he will have to leave he will have to flee greater is he in us than he who is in the world and whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. The gospel is a simple message which simply asks you to believe. You are asked to believe on the basis of certain facts. Jesus Christ was virgin born. He performed miracles. He is the God man. He died on a cross, was buried and rose again. He ascended back into heaven he sent the Holy Spirit into the world on the day of Pentecost to form the church. He is sitting at God's right hand today. His position there indicates that our redemption is complete. We are asked to enter into the rest which he offers to those who will come to him. He has a present ministry of intercession for us. We think he has other ministries too and finally he is going to return to this earth again. These are all part of the glorious gospel. This is the content of the gospel as Paul expresses it here. Which is come unto you as it is in all the world and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you since the day ye heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. Colossians 1.6 Paul says the gospel has come to the Colossians as it has come to all the world. That means you. Dr. Marvin R. Vincent, a great expositor of the epistle to the Colossians, as well as other expositors, believes that this is hyperbole. I will be honest with you, we also had difficulty accepting the, accepting the statement. Is Paul trying to say that at this particular time, when he was in prison in Rome, the gospel had reached the world? That's what he says. We've come to the position that he meant what he said literally. It is not hyperbole. Visiting Asia Minor, standing in Turkey at the city of Sardis and seeing part of a Roman road that has been uncovered by excavation is the road that Paul traveled when he came down out of the Galatian country on the way to Ephesus. For three years, Paul preached the gospel in Ephesus to people who were there from all over the Roman Empire. As a result, the gospel had gone ahead to Rome long before Paul was taken there as a prisoner. And one thing, I'm going to go ahead and bookmark this. The word for world here is cosmos, and it simply means the Roman Empire of that day. The gospel at that time had penetrated into the farthest reaches of the Roman Empire. It may have been crossed over to Great Britain. Every part of the Roman world had heard the gospel. Those early apostles were on the move. We're reluctant to criticize anything they did. Paul says here that the gospel had gone into all the Roman world and bringeth forth fruit. Wherever the gospel is preached, it will bring forth fruit. Paul says that and it is true. Faith can be weak, especially when we begin doing what I'm doing. I determined to give out the Word of God, and I'll be honest with you, sometimes I expect to fall on my face and see great failure. The biggest surprise of my life was that God blessed His Word. Was I surprised? I thought He would let me down, but He didn't. He said he would bless his word and we can count on him to do that no matter how bad or good an orator I am. I am overwhelmed today by the letters and by the people I meet who say they were brought to Christ through our radio ministry. Now this is Vernon McGee speaking. I started out weekly. It was a, it, and it is a Mickey Mouse operation. If ever there was one, it's just me. But God blesses his word. 
I don't only believe that I know it. I won't even argue with anyone about that. Some fellow, fellow uh, has come to Dr. McGee and he says, I don't believe the Bible is the word of God, but he says, you don't? He says, no, aren't you going to argue with me to persuade me? And Vernon McGee says, no. He asks, why not? Vernon says, because I know it is the word of God. I don't believe it. I not only believe it, I know it. It would be just as if someone came to mind or to me and said, Pamela, I want to argue with you about whether you love your husband or not. I can give you several philosophical arguments that will show that you don't love uh, your husband. Do you know that that fellow might out-argue me and whip me down intellectually? They might even show me by logic and all types of argument that I don't love my husband. Do you know what I would say? I'd say, brother, I don't know about your, your arguments, but I want you to know one thing. I love my husband. You see, that is something I know. I know I love him. I don't need cogent, sophisticated, astute, esoteric arguments. There are some things we simply know, and we should not let what we don't no upset what we do know that is important for us to see paul says that the gospel will bring forth fruit that is the wonderful confidence that we can have now i'm bookmarking because i don't want to keep you way long <sighs> praise god and if you heard the first part of this discourse that jesus is sitting on the right hand side of god ever Ever making intercession I want you to have that blessing I want you to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior it's as simple as ABC just admit that you've sinned believe in the Lord Jesus Christ see confess him as Savior please say this prayer out loud with me if you can mean it from your heart. Heavenly Father, I admit that I have sinned and I repent. I believe in my heart what Pam Gunderson just spoke to me out of Colossians, that you raised Jesus from the dead, that he died for my sins that I could be saved, and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And right now I receive that forgiveness, the blood that was shed by Jesus. I am saved in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer in the comment section, write, I did. Go to youandhimministries.com and in the chat area, say, I did. Tell us in, uh, in the chat section at the bottom of that website that you got saved and we will send you a Bible or any other help that we have available. But you have to give us your email address so that I can get that information out to you. You can also call me to, let, to ask for help uh, in finding a church that will help you learn about a relationship with Jesus. We just want to see you make heaven. You will see rolling on this website now as I'm speaking. If you want to write, you can write to Pam Gunderson in care of you and him ministries, 1018 East Wishkoss Street, Aberdeen, Washington, nine, oh, uh, Suite 213, Aberdeen, Washington, 98520. You can email me at pam at youinhim.info or pam at youinhimministries.com. You can phone me at 833-726-8255, or if you still have the letters on your alphabet letters on your phone, 833-PAM-TALKS. Anything that we can do to help you at You and Him Ministries, when I use the word you or our or me, I'm using the Queen's we because I am that Mickey Mouse ministry right now that is going to become so large in the Grays Harbor area and all up and down the coast 
of the west coast of washington all the way down through the areas where we're evangelizing where the word of god will become so big people will be rushing they will be grabbing a hold of you to go to the house of the Lord. This is coming. It is harvest time. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. When the Lord had me go to Harvest Church in Shelton, Washington on Sunday. It wasn't river. We've been walking in the river too long. It's time to cross over into harvest land. The fields are ripe for harvest, and this is coming, and we have to have people equipped to minister to these people. So get off your hands, get off your holy rumps, and let's move out as the army of God so that we can be a help. The church is supposed to clothe the widow, feed the widow, and the widow is to be praying if she can't work. I am Pam Gunderson, host of You and Him Ministries, Bible Study, and Christian Prophetic News. I love you people. I love ministering for the Lord. And I am going to be as authentic as God wants me to be. I'm not going to do it any way but what God speaks into my ear. I'm not going to become something I am not. God's trained and equipped me for this day and hour, and this is the way that I will proceed with this ministry, and I will be buying up property. We will build a church. We will put an app up. We will be not only online, but we will be physical to meet the needs of our community. We're not going to give up and close down. And anyone who wants to pray for me, please, I need every prayer that I can get as I pray for you. Please, please be saved, be healed and be delivered, and go serve your King, those that already know the Lord Jesus Christ. And I will see you on the next video.